Okay, we're gonna try to get back to work on this rollback a little bit. And uh, I think what I'll do, I've gotta get the drive shaft out and move back. This section here is gonna be the rear drive shaft. And we'll have to figure out where we're gonna be able to mount for the front for the carrier bearing, the front drive shaft, and then uh, I think there's actually two drive shafts in there. And uh, we're doing, we're gonna add one, so we're gonna have to pull one instead of three. And uh, pretty long truck. But I've got another shaft with the uh, carrier bearing, so, or uh, center support bearing is what a lot of people call it. Shouldn't be a problem. I did get this piece off, and uh, it's bent, so we gotta fix it. It's just sitting on here, it's not mounted or anything. This has gotta be bent back, welded, you know, repaired. And uh, I have got the uh, some of the other parts off the frame, the HD3500 frame, which I'll show you. And for anybody that don't know this bed, I, I actually bought a HD3500 with a bad engine, and the frame was bent on it. And I uh, had this Jaredan aluminum bed, 19 foot. Uh, not much on aluminum beds, but, you know, I can live with it. But it's a pretty nice bed. But uh, I've got it, got it mounted on. I uh, extended the truck three foot just by moving the axle back and uh, I think I actually had to add as you can see here hopefully I had to add about look like four and a half inches five inches to the frame and uh, so we got all that done and uh, should work out fine there I've still got to extend my airlines for my airbags this is air air ride suspension this was actually an ambulance originally and uh, it's a four-door, so I'm wanting a nicer truck. And we're going to redo the headache bar. Uh, as you can see, this one's a, a, one of the short ones for a regular cab. We've got one here that a friend of mine gave me a few years back, and I've saved, and it's a taller one, and it's in good shape. It's got really good bends on it. I like these bends because, as you can see, these bends are crushed. When they bend it, they crushed it around, and I just don't like the looks of it. And uh, the bends I done on the last rollback I built, I actually beat it out and bent them around, made it look just like this. And uh, but there's a center section missing out of it. Somebody had cut it out. They must have needed it for something or needed a piece of steel, which is not a problem. Uh, we can straighten everything out and you know put a piece in it. And like I said, the bends are what I need, and it's just taller. So once we get to get the bed on and mounted and get it back rolled up, where we can uh, get an idea on the on the height because this is a pretty tall cab we want the light just to be above the cab and uh my truck's dirty from from sitting uh i hadn't started it in quite a while because i've got the uh i've actually got the uh gas tank off and it was missing the front bumper when i bought it and it's got a little alcohol aluminum wheels on it's a pretty nice truck i mean it's kind of high miles well not real high but 238 i think is what's on it but i can live with it but i like the allison and these are nothing but vans you know with a big truck front end so everything inside is just like a van you know uh leather interior and it could be pleather i don't know i've never had anything really with leather so let me see it looks like fake leather to me it's a naga hide how about that come off the naga farm but uh pretty nice truck just need to put a few things back together got the when they took the lights and the box and everything off this truck i don't think they really give a crap they just cut wires rip stuff and so we had to get some stuff figured out on it and uh it's be nice for customers and uh we'll get her together here but i gotta get the fuel tank on we'll run that uh narrow tank right down the inside of this frame rail and you know the saddle tanks i like but i can't run them under the cab because this cab's so low and it's already got steps on it uh we're gonna run it in there and then hopefully we can make it work you know everything on this truck actually sits a lot lower you know the frame is, is of course here but we're looking at almost eight inches down for the running boards and uh you know the exhaust drive shafts down low and then of course our mounts for our our better about six inches down i'd say so uh gas tank's gonna be down just a little bit but it won't be bad and uh i think that will work out but i'm gonna go ahead and show you the stuff that i've cut off the hd 3500 frame okay we've got the uh this is one of the toolboxes they just had a uh, flat bar ran inside the toolboxes and bolted on and then they uh 
actually just had it butted right up to the frame and welded on and I don't know how we're going to do it so we'll figure it out as we go and um, I've got an air compressor electric mounted on uh, the pasture side of the frame so we may not have room for a box on that side because we still got to run this hydraulic tank it's got to run on that side and uh, we got it off and let me see there's a hydraulic pump we just got to snake the hoses out of it and we've just got a return hose coming from the control valves to the tank and we got the pressure line which is running right down the inside of the frame and all the way down and we'll get it out now we're gonna have to lengthen them two lines either them two depending on where i mount the tank probably gonna have to lengthen the suction hose which is the biggest hose or the uh and the pressure hose so we can actually just put a union in them go longer i mean instead of uh instead of uh making new hoses because i mean they're in good shape uh here's the tank uh, i don't know if it's fortunate or unfortunate but it was full of diesel so it's heavy as can be so i'm gonna have to get some of it out i'm hoping since this is a gm tank also that we can have a uh be able to have a gas gauge be able to hook it up there's no fuel pump in this tank there's no there was no fuel pump in the original tank it was mounted in the back center and it won't work because of the uh the bed in the way but uh i think this is probably the first thing we're gonna go ahead and try to get done when we can get the truck fired up and then uh probably on the, get on the drive shaft toolboxes will be last this is the set that was on the driver's side i'd love to put these back on they got stainless doors on them one hinge needs a little work on it but uh they're aluminum boxes so they're light pretty nice little boxes you know they're short there's actually two of them there they split so they're not open through uh you could open them through but they need to get water in them and they'd be a pain in the butt but uh, so we'll just live with short ones long ones are always nice because you can put an axe and a short shovel and stuff like that in but you know we'll work with what we've got and uh these drive shafts are too small the new joints and stuff but i've got other plans for the drive shaft the rear end the front end and the transmission we're going to keep them for another project and uh for anybody that didn't see it here's where the frame was was bent and re redone fixed i don't know why they fixed it back then or maybe it bent again after they fixed it but uh you can see the the swoop in it there and the reason that this was bent you know i know the guy that ran this truck and uh if it wouldn't fit on the bed he would put it on the wheel lift and that was the problem you know you, you can't hang a two-ton truck on a wheel lift that's you know 10 feet out behind your axle and uh you know physics physics are going to come involved when you've got a, a heavy long front end and then you've got a the frame's going to bend somewhere and uh something's going to happen or going to give and that's what happened and uh so but that's the way it is that's one of the reasons i got the truck cheap so i'm not complaining a bit and i'm gonna go ahead and get at it i think i'll get get some uh five gallon jugs over here and get this uh tank siphoned out as much as i can get anyway to lighten it up because it is just about full and then we'll start getting it mounted show you more well here's the first bit of diesel out of the uh the tank and as you can see it's not green so that's not good uh somebody's actually running uh, was running uh, off-road fuel in it so we're gonna have to uh do something about that drain it all the way out i guess and uh it's just about full so okay okay folks it took me just a couple of seconds to figure out that uh wouldn't be smart to put the gas tank on first because uh i need to make sure we can get this drive shaft in without doing a lot of changing uh it's kind of putting us in a bad spot but i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to end up shortening two sections uh, all right all right can see here i don't know if you can see we've got one section that's already up under there and what i'm going to do is i'm going to build another section to come back to this original mount and we're going to do that using this uh this drive shaft that i picked up it's got the right size yoke and joints and then uh then i'm going to put the original back in we're not going to shorten it and that's going to bring our next 
Let me see. We should bring our next uh, carrier bearing or center support bearing back around this cross member. And that's going to give me an open spot through here. Excuse the dogs there. But that'll give me an open spot here to get that tank in. And then we'll just shorten this rear shaft. And uh, we're not going to have to shorten it a lot, but it'll be enough to to make it work. Okay, folks. Uh, I had a little trouble finding one, but nobody had one in stock. But I finally got me a U-joint a for this shaft. So we've got our old one out. We're going to get our new one knocked in. And then uh, I'm going to get a measurement of how long I need to make this. And I am going to cut it on this end to shorten it. What we're going to do is we're going to shorten this shaft with the uh, center sport bearing enough to bolt where that other one did. So basically we're going to make this shaft the same length as that one. And uh, except the difference is, and the reason I'm not using this one right here, up or you know up there, is because this one's got a uh, spline joint on it to slide. And of course this one I've got here don't. So we've got to be able to bolt into there solid. So we'll go ahead and get it done, get it made, and then we'll, that'll give us an uh, area of where we need to make another mount for this uh, carrier bearing. And we'll get it made, and then we will make the, we'll cut this drive shaft here and shorten it up to the rear end. Now we are making the rear drive shaft a little bit shorter. And, you know, I know that changes things because you got air ride, you're going to be dropping and stuff, but it's not going to be enough to really matter. Uh, it's not going to hurt a thing anyway. And uh, U-joints are made to, uh, to move up and down anyway. You just don't want to go too far. And uh, the farther you go, the weaker it is. But also, you know, you start hitting your yoke against your uh, drive shaft. And then you got a, then you got a problem. Okay. Let me get this joint in and I'll show you more. Okay, we got our new U-joint on. Got it up there to the yoke. And you can see what I'm doing here. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, to get the length I want for the drive shaft, or how much I actually want to take out of the drive shaft, all we got to do is measure from our mount. Uh, we'll go to the center of it. We'll take the bolt out. That way we can find about center. Go to the center and then go to this bolt, which is... Uh, about 12 and a half so if we take 12 and a half inches out of the shaft and we're going to do it on the other end but basically what I'm going to do is cut as close to this weld as I can cut and we'll go back 12 and a half inches and cut it off straight and then I'll put it back together bolt it in dial indicate it uh, with it in the truck I'll just keep spinning it and dial indicate it in and then uh, we'll tack weld it dial indicate it tack weld it just get it welded up and I I'm sure a lot of you have seen me do this before. I mean, this is nothing new. And then uh, once that's done, we can actually get an idea of where we want our, where we're going to put our bracket for this uh, center sport bearing. But uh, to get an idea, you can figure from here to the center of the yoke, or to the beginning of the yoke. Let's just say four inches. So we go from here to four inches. That puts us somewhere about right here. So if we figure from there, and we'll just remember that little rust line right there. And what we'll do, we'll come to the end of the U-joint down there. And then we'll come to the center, and that's 38 and a quarter. So we can just figure from that rust spot. Kind of hard to hold the camera into it, but 38 and a quarter. It's going to put us right around in here. So we can come off the front of this cross member with a, a bracket. We should be able to... Uh, take care of it it's nice it was back a little bit farther but the, the whole goal here was to be able to use this uh, cross member without having to add one so we'll have to build a sort of a plate like that and that come you know hangs down and uh, we might have one somewhere but the only problem is is it's gonna be mounting on this side which has no flat surface to mount to so we can mount it the other side, but we'll have to bring it back farther and then maybe weld a support on it or something to be able to be strong enough. But that shouldn't be a, an issue to figure out there. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and get this front one. We'll get it cut and slid back together. And then uh, 
we'll get get to rolling on that now I don't have I've only got one u-boat uh, and this is an international dry shaft so I've actually ordered another one it was three dollars and something I actually ordered two new ones that way I could just go ahead and replace them but I looked everywhere and uh, not everywhere of course but as much as I could stand to look and I couldn't find another one and uh, I use these on two other trucks anyway and maybe more than that but so you know it wouldn't hurt to have an extra extra one or two around or whatever so I went ahead and ordered two and it won't take them long to get here and uh, so we can get that drive shaft bolted in and everything but let's get this thing shortened up okay I noticed another thing on this shaft I wanted to show you uh, you see our new joint we've got it on there it's good and flat but if you look back here at our yoke it's not indexed in with the uh, with the joint so evidently they could have this off one tooth but instead of taking this off and changing it when I cut this shaft what I usually do is I'll take a magnetic level and the way this one's made I'll actually put it across here and get this exactly level and then uh, I'll put it across the, the top of the, uh, the shaft here and this is a machine surface or usually is so we can uh, get an idea from that and we'll make it exactly level but that's one of the things you got to watch make sure you know all your u-joints are indexed in right because this one's off uh, oh it's off a ways and you know it shouldn't be but somebody could have put it back on the wrong spline one spline off or if it's a really fine spline it could be two but anyway we're going to go ahead and straighten it up uh, a different way and we'll go ahead and get this cut okay we've got this one cut and i just used a regular air die grinder and uh with a cut off wheel so uh you know it's kind of easy to go overboard and go too far with these but you know and i i scratched it a little bit but you know once you've done it uh 100 times or so then uh you know it gets easier so now all i got to do i decided on inch or 12 and a quarter i measured it a couple more times and uh so what i'll do is I'll just go ahead and go from here and we won't worry about the 16th inch of the blade but uh and it may be less but we're gonna go from here and we'll measure back 12 and a quarter slice it off should be ready to slide back together and we'll get it back up in there okay we got it uh ready to put back together here uh just remember there's a weld seam on a lot of these on the inside it's not seamless pipe so you need to grind it away make sure that it gets you know fits down in there good we'll go ahead and uh knock her together here and get it back up under okay folks uh got the drive shaft slipped back together and in there and you can see it's about center of where we want it and uh i've got this yoke lined up with the uh yoke on the other end with the u-joint in it and i'm gonna give you a couple of tips here couple things you really need to watch for and remember okay hopefully you can see it here it's kind of dark this camera i don't think does as, does as good in dark as my other one uh you can see we got it cleaned up it's ready to weld a uh, couple things i don't care how straight you cut this drive shaft when you slide that yoke in there it is not going to be right uh i've never had one come out right no matter what I mean, it's going to be a few thousandths off, you know, at the at the uh, minimum, and you know, it could be way farther than that. But so don't ever assume it's perfect and weld it together because it's not going to come out perfect. Uh, number two, make sure that you put your straps on and tighten them up good because you want everything seated and in place. Make sure your if you've had your front drive shaft out, make sure your carrier bearing there is or center support bearings tightened down good. Uh, make sure your rear one is which we don't have this one tightened down yet and then uh, when you turn this shaft you're gonna set your dial indicator up uh, you know beside it somewhere that's good and solid I mean, you wouldn't want to put it on a muffler or nothing like that you want to put it you know maybe come off of uh, this cross member with a piece clamp it on good get your dial indicator as close toward your welded in as you can you don't want it so close that it's going to interfere you know in the way but you don't want it way toward the back Okay, you need to clean a good spot around it. And when you turn this shaft, and uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be turning it by hand, 
Now I've got it in park now, so I can't turn it. Of course, this is a Allison, and uh, where I got the brake on one of the two. But anyway, you get it in neutral to where you can turn it, and you turn it by hand. But make sure you don't push over, push down, or anything, and do it yourself. Don't let somebody else do it for you. And uh, you know, really, what you need to do is reach up and turn the other shaft, and make sure you're not pushing it anywhere sideways because there is rubber mount inside of that carrier bearing. And uh, and just you know, spin it easy. You can really tell when you spin it whether you're pushing off or anything like that. And uh, just keep working at it. Get you a good clean spot. And we're gonna have to wire brush something on this for sure. And uh, you know, get you a good good clean spot to put your dial indicator. And once you get it, keep going until you get it perfectly in. And then tack it in one spot. And then go back and check it because chances are when you tack it, it's gonna move a little bit. And uh, do it again keep you know just keep at it until you get it right and keep adding tax to it and eventually you'll have a, a perfectly uh dial indicated uh drive shaft that uh is not going to vibrate and shake i mean anybody can say what they want you know this is probably number 100 drive shaft for me i mean i've done so many of them over the years you know i've done uh the rat rod builds the one day we've done uh two of them we built the drive shafts for and uh you know I, I've built them for all my bigger trucks and other people's trucks, and you know I'm really hard on them. I mean I don't uh, I don't give these trucks I've got a break, uh, and you know I, I, you, as you can see with the rat rod builds, you know I go out there and just hammer on as hard as I can. I don't worry about them because they're not going to break if you do it right. You know you don't have to chuck this up in a four jaw chuck and take that weld completely off. This thing is in there probably seven eighths of an inch. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. This thing is in there probably seven sixteenths of an inch, maybe three eighths. Uh, but it's in far enough that it's not going to move. You know, if you get a good weld around it, we're actually welding on top of their, you know, their weld, and then you know to the shaft. So uh, it'll all work out. Take your time, do it. Uh, you know, there's no real reason that you need to get. A machine shop to do a drive shaft i mean if you're worried about it balanced and you know you're taking it somewhere where they're going to balance it you know okay but if you're taking it to a machine shop that's local to you and they're just going to indicate it in anyway you know this is something that you could do yourself uh i wouldn't recommend welding it with a uh you know 110 wire welder or anything you want to get some good penetration on it get a good bead around it but uh anyway we're going to go ahead and uh I think we're gonna call it quits for now i got a couple things i need to do before it gets too dark and we're gonna get back on this thing probably uh tomorrow which is christmas day and uh maybe uh get the drive shaft complete that way we can uh, move on to the next thing and which will be the the fuel tank uh i'd love to get this truck up and rolling but uh again merry christmas to everybody uh happy new year and you know I appreciate everybody watching. I really do. And uh, hope you enjoy it. Till next time. Bye.